name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
comes alongside of them to equip them to persevere in trials and, and even flourish right in the midst of troubles. And that's the witness all across the New Testament. In the Gospel this morning, the disciples are hiding in the upper room out of fear that those who crucified Jesus will come after them. And what does Jesus do when he breathes the Holy Spirit upon them? He does not take them away from Jerusalem or fortify the room in which they are hiding out, you know, like change the locks and help them secure their position. He doesn't say, you know, circle up, it's you first. He sends them out. He sends them out into a dangerous world. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And then he gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit to create in them the courage they're going to need to follow Jesus' way of life. And in the Acts reading this morning, the disciples are waiting. You know, they're all gathered together, waiting for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And once it comes, they're not out of trouble, folks. They get into trouble. They go out. They go out, spilling out into the streets to proclaim the good news to people they had every reason to believe would at least be skeptical, if not outright hostile, uh, to their message. The Holy Spirit is never about fortification. It's never about circling in on ourselves. It's never about proclaiming me first or my group first. The Holy Spirit of Jesus is always about caring for the whole, the whole of God's family, including God's creation. A church that's filled with the Holy Spirit, like a shepherd, understands itself to exist for the sake of the world, for the sake of those who have never heard of Jesus, not just for the comfort and security of those who are already here. The Holy Spirit, in other words, it moves us out, outward in ways that can sometimes seem self-sacrificing. So you can see again and again in Paul's letters and and experiences of the early church that the Spirit is given to enable individual believers to look beyond their individual needs and beyond their own personal hopes and fears and equip them with distinct gifts. And the reason for those distinct gifts is not just so I can say, hey, I can heal, hey, I can pray, hey, I can give. No, the reason for all of that is not to glorify yourself, but in order that everything can work together for the common good. I mean, you really do get the sense when you read the Bible, you really get the sense that the Holy Spirit is not some kind of superhero that's sent to rescue us from whatever trouble we're in. That fiery Holy Spirit, that fiery Holy Spirit equips us, encourages us, stays with us, enables us to perceive the needs of our neighbors, to look out and see what the needs are out there. And then enables us to rise to meet the occasion, rise up to meet those needs with tenacity. You know, because the Spirit-filled community doesn't give up when the going is hard. With competence. Because the Spirit-filled community calls forth the right gifts at the right time for the right people. And with courage. Now, why courage? Tenacity, competence, and courage. That's what the Holy Spirit gives us. Because the values of the kingdom are often decidedly different from the values of whoever is, you know, up there um, making budgets and things like that. Courage. Courage is needed to speak truth to power, to speak and live the values of ordering our common life such that no one is without a home who wants a home. No one is without food or needs to choose between food and medicine. No one is bullied or caused to feel less than because of the color of their skin or the shape of their bodies or their religion. Loving loudly. Love loudly. As the bishop, presiding Bishop Michael Curry, presiding Bishop Michael Curry, 
encourages us to do. Love loudly. That's what all the red means, right? That's what. And did some of you get in the um, in your mailboxes that newsletter from the magazine from the Episcopal Diocese from our own diocese? Right on the cover it says love loudly. If you didn't get one, there's one out on the welcome table. It's a beautiful newsletter. Love loudly. It takes courage to love loudly. It takes tenacity. It takes skill. And it takes courage. Now that sounds very good, doesn't it? But my friends, let's be honest and just admit that sometimes we get tired of doing saying the right thing. Sometimes we get tired of loving loudly and being out there on the edges. Sometimes we want things to be easy and we want the Holy Spirit to come and make it easy. Save us. Take away the challenges that are overwhelming us at any given moment. But the operative word with God seems to be with, not from. Like, I will be with you, not take you from, out of your difficulties. So the Holy Spirit is going to be with Suzanne as she learns um, to, you know, uh, navigate this injury and come back from it. Not going to take away that challenge from her. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit promises to be with us as we navigate political upheaval and planetary changes. Not to take those challenges away from us. The Holy Spirit has promised to be with this church as we address issues of debt and drought. Not to magically sweep that away from us. In the Holy Spirit, God comes alongside of us to strengthen us and equip us. And in this way, we don't just survive difficulties. We flourish. We flourish right in the midst of them. Because here's the deal. God might be working through us in the midst of our challenges, in the midst of our difficulties, and whatever challenges we face, for a purpose. For a purpose. Maybe you're going through a hard time. Maybe you're facing a hard time. And God actually has a purpose in that. Not that God planned it. Not that God wants it. Not that, you know, something bad happened because somehow that's in God's plan. That's not what I'm saying. But things happen. And then God uses that for the good, not just of yourself, but of others. When you walk through a hard time, lo and behold, it turns out that you can speak to other people and help them through similar difficulties. We have a purpose. We're baptized into a real purpose, and that is to care for the needs of our neighbors, to care for others, to share God's love in word and in deed. So the Christ life that Mackenzie and Dylan and Olivia are entering into along with us is a life that's not lived just for ourselves, but for those around us. And the Holy Spirit goes with us, comes alongside of us, is within us to make that possible and to make it even more possible than we can ever ask or imagine. So come, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you.